All right, friends, this is the video that many of you have been asking about and waiting for. Today, I am moving from VMware ESXi to Proxmox. Yes, yes, I know I spent a ton of time debating back and forth about which direction I'd be taking my home lab's virtualization, choosing between XCPNG and Proxmox for my production workloads, and now it's time to get to it. Hey there, home labbers, self-hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here, it is finally time to bite the bullet. Get off the fence, put a ring on it, however you wanna say it. It's time to officially migrate my home lab and 2GT's infrastructure off of VMware ESXi and vCenter onto Proxmox on the 45 drives Proxinator VM16. It has been a tough decision on which direction to move here, one that I haven't really wanted to make if I'm being honest, but here we are, so what's the plan? We're going to be following the Proxmox migration wiki and attempt to migrate my VM workloads out of VMware ESXi over to the 45 drives Proxineer VM16 running Proxmox version 8.2.3. I'm genuinely hoping this goes as smoothly as the wiki seems to promise, and of course, I'll take you guys with me along the way. Let's swing over to vCenter and have a look at my current environment, my VMs, and talk about what I'm moving. Once we're logged into vCenter, we land by default on the hosts and clusters view. On the left-hand side, we can see my two nodes, node A and node B, and all the VMs that are running within the cluster named Supercluster above. On the right side window pane, we get full performance details about my cluster, including my very unhappy vSAN health. I won't miss vSAN when it's gone. It was an incredible pain in the ass on my two node cluster. Yes, I know that's a waste. And yes, I know you should have three nodes. Been there, done that. Switching over to VM and templates view, you can see a better organization of my virtualization broken down into VMs I consider production, templates, and testing. I really love the simplicity of the view in vCenter, something I'll miss in Proxmox. Anyway, over to the storage view, I have a few data stores mounted as you can see. One to my beleaguered vSAN, one to my Synology NAS, and one dedicated iSCSI and one NFS mount to SuperSAN, which is my TrueNAS scale primary storage. Lastly, the network view. I have six defined VLANs exposed to my ESXi hosts. Those VLANs have different roles and responsibilities in my network. For example, the IoT network is just for IoT devices, ServerNet for server VMs, a DMZ for hosting, and so on. I have created these VLANs in Proxmox as well, so that when I migrate VMs over, I can assign them to their correct networks. I really will miss the UI of vCenter. VMware didn't get here overnight. There were plenty of stepping stones of garbage UIs that we all had to live through in the past. But version 8 of vCenter was really well done though, and it will be missed. But we have a sexy new Proxmox host, the VM16, to migrate all of our VMs over to, so let's take a look at the host as it is. Let's get logged into the Proxinator and have a look around. This is the folder view of Proxmox, which breaks the different components of Proxmox into separate groups, kind of like we just saw in vCenter, albeit a bit less featureful. Under nodes, we find my one and only Proxmox host, the Proxinator, that will be my future home for all of my workloads. And in the right pane, we can see the summary of the host, which is mostly idle at this time. Under the virtual machine folder, we find two VMs that I've already provisioned out as part of my early testing on the Proxinator. One is up and running, and the other one is currently shut down. The colored circles are tags I've added to the VMs. Under SDN, I've created five additional virtual networks that align with the vSwitches we just saw in vCenter, with the local network network being the default VLAN. And lastly, under storage, we have all of the storage targets that are configured on the Proxinator. Prox T1 P1 R1 SSD is the primary storage pool backed by ZFS running locally on the Proxinator. SN T4 P4 R1 NFS is a dedicated NFS share hosted by my TrueNAS scale storage system. This is here for additional storage space, ISO storage, and so on. My intention is to use that only as secondary storage and not for running VMs. The last two storage devices are also internal to the Proxinator, with local being the OS installation target and local ZFS being the root pool of the Prox SSD pool previously discussed. Okay, background housekeeping out of the way, let's configure Proxmox to pull VMs from ESXi and migrate over some VMs. There are some key things to note here before you get started. First, you can't migrate a live VM from ESXi to Proxmox. You need to shut it down first. Secondly, if you have any outstanding snapshots on ESXi or vCenter, you need to consolidate or delete them or your transfers are gonna take an unreasonably long time. And lastly, you should remove any VM guest tools on the VMs before you migrate them. This is something that I may have missed on a Windows VM I migrated and it was a mess. I'll show you that in a bit. Let's get to the configuration and kick off a migration. All right, migrating VMs from ESXi to Proxmox is actually done via the top level data center storage section, which I guess makes sense since we're moving VMs from one data store to another. 
Anyway, we'll head over to Data Store at the top, and then over to Storage in the nested pane, and then we'll click Add, select ESXi, and then we'll enter the connection details for our first ESXi host. Another note here, you can't add your vCenter instance only ESXi hosts, so if you're migrating over from a large cluster, you have to do this host by host. Once done, we'll hit Add. All right, now we see Node A listed. Great, let's add my second ESXi host now. Same process, back to Add, and then select ESXi, add the connection details for Node B, and we'll click Add once again. Boom, done. Configuration done, let's look into the ESXi hosts we've added and see what we see. Over on the left, under storage, is where we'll go to see the VMs that are contained within the ESXi hosts we just added. My existing ESXi cluster has two nodes, and when we click on node A, we only see one VM listed, and that's an HA data center helper VM that works as part of vCenter and not a VM we'll be moving. Node B is currently running all of my VM workloads, and when we click on it, we get a much fuller list of VMs. Let's kick off a simple VM transfer here first. We'll select my Haiku VM from the list, and then click the import button at the top. This is the import guest wizard, and for the most part, it populated this information based on what Proxmox read from the VMX or the virtual machine configuration file from ESXi. The only thing I'm going to change here is the default bridge since the DMZ net is not the network I want this VM to connect to. It belongs to the server net, so we'll select that one. The advanced tab allows you to configure or change more advanced settings like what type of storage controller is used, mount an ISO, and change the virtual NIC model and MAC address if needed. The resulting config tab just gives you a summary list of the config we're about to import. This VM has a disk that is 30 gigabytes in size, so we'll click Import, and we'll see how quickly it gets pulled in. The transfer took roughly 5 minutes to move and convert 30 gigabytes over, which comes out roughly to around 800 megabits per second, which is not great. Let's fire up the VM and make sure everything works as expected now. Alright, over on the left under Virtual Machines, we now see Haiku listed. Let's click on it, and head over to the Console tab and click Start Now to make sure it boots up. This VM is super basic, just a simple BIOS boot, basic E1000 NIC, and that's about it. And it looks good, so we'll shut it down. Before we move on, I'm going to tag this VM with appropriate tags since I can't use subfolders to better organize the VMs in Proxmox. Up at the top, I'll click on the Tag section, click the plus and select Testing, which I've already created previously, and create a new tag and type in Haiku. Click the check mark to save the tags, and we're done. Let's move a bigger, more complicated VM now. Let's move a Windows 11 VM and see how well that migration process pans out. This VM has a couple of disks totaling somewhere north of 260 gigabytes of storage, uses UEFI, and has a virtual TPM. Let's see how this goes. Same routine as before. We'll click on the node B mount under storage, select the Windows 11 VM named Sharon from the list, and click Import. The first oddity I noticed right away is that Proxmox read the VM as having eight sockets, each with one core, which is incorrect. It was one socket with eight cores. There may be no real distinction between cores and sockets for Proxmox, but for the VM there is, so we'll correct that. We'll also change the version setting from Windows 10 to Windows 11. I'm not entirely sure it matters to Proxmox or the VM, but we'll set it to the actual Windows version running on the VM. Lastly for this screen, we'll switch the default bridge over to the server net network where this VM should connect. Under Advanced, we can see the two disks plus the EFI disk, no ISO mounted, and the VMX Net3 NIC listed. All good there, one last stop on the resulting config tab, and then the import buto, and away we go. Boy, oh boy, did this thing take a long time to migrate. The 260 gigabytes worth of disks took roughly 30 minutes to move, which is right around one gigabit a second transfer rate when doing the math. The migration transfer speeds are a known issue for Proxmox. I reached out to 45 Drives just to make sure it wasn't something on my end. Shout out to Conlin over at 45 Drives, and it was confirmed that it is indeed expected performance. It was also mentioned that there are other ways to make migrations work faster, but it takes more of a hands-on approach, and it's more involved, and I think the vast majority of people would be using the GUI import functionality over command line magic. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong in the comments below. This wasn't the only gotcha when it came to the Windows VM. As I mentioned, this VM has a VTPM in ESXi, which wasn't migrated over. I'm a little surprised that you can't also copy over the virtual TPM from ESXi since Proxmox has TPM support, though I suspect that either VMware doesn't make it accessible or it's incompatible with Proxmox. And this really isn't an issue for me, I'll just add one later, but for those using TPM for disk encryption, you've been warned. There were more issues with Windows though. Migration and the hardware change caused my Windows activation state to break, which is not entirely unexpected since the virtual hardware provided by VMware and Proxmox are different, but it really sucks though. 
And then there was my mistake of not removing VMware tools before migrating the VM. Once I booted in and tried to remove VMware tools, the uninstallation repeatedly failed, and the best I could do was disable the VMware tool services to fix the problem. I'll probably end up tossing this import, uninstalling VMware tools on the source VM, and re-importing this VM again to avoid this. So take heed Windows VM users. So Windows was kind of a mess to migrate, even though the VM did boot and work on the other side. Such is life with Windows licensing, I suppose. But how did the Linux VMs migrate? Was it seamless? Mostly. Let's take a look. Migrating my Linux VMs worked just as well, with the big exception that even though the virtual NIC was kept as a VMX Net3 NIC with the same MAC address, when the freshly migrated Linux machine booted up, it had a different interface name than it did previously. This meant that every Linux VM I migrated over that was set to VMX Net3, which was all of them, required me to edit NetPlan to reflect the different interface name. Interestingly enough, all of the migrated VMs had the same interface name of ENS18, so it was just renumbering the interfaces and rebooting the VMs. Okay, fast forward to the future, everything that was running on VMware ESXi and vCenter has now been migrated over to the Proxinator and Proxmox, so let's take a quick look at the system. First off is the data center summary page just to see how things are looking from an overall health perspective, and everything looks great. I'm currently at 50% of my total memory, so I've got tons of room to grow in resources, the Epic processor isn't breaking a sweat, and I'm good on overall storage as well. Jumping over to the host itself, we can see the same thing. Load looks good, everything is happy and healthy, just like we want. Under VMs, we have a full list of VMs, including all the tagging I've done to help organize them better. I really wish I could create subfolders in the folder view in Proxmox. I would really love to separate these VMs logically in subfolders over just with color-coded tags, but it's not the worst thing ever. And lastly, in storage, with all of my VMs migrated, I'm sitting at roughly 10% total storage usage, so I've got a ton more growth here as well. I'm pretty damn happy. Okay, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this whole endeavor, starting with the good. The 45 drives Proxinator is crazy fast. As soon as I moved some of my biggest heavy hitters over like Plex, I immediately noticed a performance improvement, zero wait time for transcoding, snappier user interfaces, and just overall a world of difference for all of my VMs. It was really obvious that my E5 2680 V4s were impacting my performance. The Proxinator hardware is fantastic. Anyone looking for a turnkey Proxmox solution should seriously consider it. You get all the quality engineering that 45 Drives is known for and Proxmox support directly from them, which I used and I can vouch for. Proxmox is also doing a fantastic job of running my workloads and I'm warming to its charm, especially when you use the light mode interface. Light mode is the best mode, fight me. Anyway, let's get the bad out of the way. The transfer speed for VM migrations is going to be a problem for anyone migrating critical workloads over from ESXi to Proxmox. One gigabit a second is incredibly slow, especially if the VMs you're moving have giant disks. All of my gear is 25 gig connected, so when I started migrating, I thought I had something wrong with my configuration in Proxmox, but now I know that's just the way it is. That being said, it does sound like there are other ways to migrate workloads faster if that's all you've got, but it's likely that if you're a business moving Moving VMs between ESXi and Proxmox, you're better off using your backup and restore software like Veeam now that Veeam fully supports Proxmox. Now the ugly. It's unfortunate that VM migrations require extra steps to get the workloads online post-migration. Having to reconfigure NICs for the Linux and Windows VMs is a bummer, having Windows activation break because of the hardware changes sucks, and no option to move your virtual TPMs over could mean encrypted disks that you can't decrypt if you're using BitLocker. So be mindful of all of that. Also, don't forget to remove the VMware tools before you migrate your Windows VMs or you're gonna have a bad time. Suffice to say though, many of these issues are just the life we live when migrating VMs from one platform to another, regardless of whether it's Proxmox or XCPG or even something else. There's one last thing to do with this video before it's done, and that is shut down vCenter and my two ESXi hosts. I have this one sentimental thing that I do every time I shut down something for the last time. So if you'll permit me, I'll leave you with my favorite quote from Hamlet. Good night, sweet prince, and may flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Thanks for watching.